guys i am back this is our last session of the sprint tech series i guess you guys have learned from us not only me physics chemistry mathematics and i hope we were very we were helpful okay whatever content i have given you know they are very enriching trust me if you just go through them you will be able to score quite a lot just make sure you understand those concepts you practice them write them okay they are all very important things okay they are like selected topics okay nothing has been done which is you know of less priority all high priority topics we have covered not only in biology in physics chemistry and mathematics itself okay so this is my last session today and as i told you i will be taking certain doubts also and and i'll cover this first chapter oh, sorry last chapter and i'll try to give you give you an idea what it is about and in the end i'll discuss the doubts which you have already posted okay i'll try to incorporate them in this okay so let's study now bro what what is our environment and why do we need to protect them protect it basically people you know out of world's most polluted 20 cities 14 are from india out of world's most polluted cities 14 are from india imagine delhi delhi is the world's most polluted city world's most polluted is delhi hai na people there you know have get lung diseases just breathing in the air of delhi that's how bad the environment problem is okay we we what do we do we take cars every home has two or three cars so much of air pollution industries industries release so much of air pollution hai na garbage wala what do they do they burn the solid waste paper litter so all this what does it add it adds to air pollution hai na and what do we do the sewage water where does it go it goes into the water bodies you know air and water are supposed to help us survive they are life giving force and they have become global trash cans i want to understand water and air the two things necessary to survive have become a global trash can water may you put anything anything all waste material of industries where does it go it goes into the water ganga you, you know you would have i don't know if you have heard it or not ganga was so beautiful you know so pure so you know enriched and so nutrient rich but now it has become most polluted river one of the most polluted river of the world okay that is the situation of environment in india okay so it's very bad that's why we need to study about our environment and management of natural resources why do i need to study about management of natural resources because we human beings are exploiting it like anything the way we are using our petrol right your kids won't have petrol to use they won't have petrol to use only so we need to save something for them and i don't want my kids to breathe in this polluted air right i don't want my kids to have lung diseases right you would not want your son or daughter to have like whenever i believe you are in 10th grade you are facing boards yeah but once you grow up and you have kids so would you want your son and you know daughter to breathe in polluted air no right hai na that is why we need to protect our environment and manage our natural resources also imagine i we we all used up all the iron available on the earth what will our future generation do they also need some iron right they also need some gold or they also need some coal or petroleum left for them we are so greedy we are utilizing all of them so we need to understand management of natural resources we need to use them judiciously okay we need to use them judiciously at the same time we need to protect our environment also this is the entire chapter about okay so i just selected certain questions we'll just discuss them 
Yeah. Why are bacteria and fungi called as decomposers? People, I'll just go through them very fast, hai na? and in the end, I'll take some questions on the excretion basically. Excretion, mein you people were having doubts. Hai na? I'll draw the nephron and the other things. Okay. Yeah. Why are the bacteria and fungi decomposers? List any two advantages of decomposers to the environment. Why do we call them as decomposers? Because they destroy dead and decaying plant or animal matter. They de decay, destroy, plant, decay, you know, what do they do? They digest decaying plant or animal matter. Say a plant matter is there. After 10 days, 20 days, it disappears, right? Why? Because of action of bacteria and fungi. Bacteria and fungi act, act on dead and decaying matter and convert them into nutrients. That is why they are very important. What will happen if bacteria and fungi are not there? What will happen? All the dead bodies, they won't decompose. You would have seen on roads, you know, dogs get hit by car and they lie. After a few days, they disappear. Why? Because of action of bacteria and fungi, they decompose it. Okay, so imagine bacteria and fungi are not there, that dead dog will be lying there for ages because there is no one to what destroy, decompose it. Able to understand that's the necessity for bacteria and fungi. Yeah, break down dead remains of waste products of organic waste products also, undigested food also gets decomposed by bacteria and fungi okay what do they convert them into they basically convert say malab, them into nutrients they convert them into nutrients say carbon oxygen nitrogen hydrogen or something like that they convert them into nutrients Hena? now yeah Okay, the two advantages, they return the simple components to the soil, after they degrade them, what happens, the nutrients are added to the soil, the plant can use it again to make new products. The plant is eaten by animals, so it gets added to the animals also, and then again animal dies, then the nutrients again come back to the soil. Okay, they create balance in the environment, we say. Okay, so they are very important, very good. Yeah, cleansing the atmosphere as I told you if a dog dies it gets decomposed because of action of bacteria and fungi. Damage to the ozone layer is cause of concern. Justify the statement, suggest two steps to limit this damage. Yes, what is ozone layer people? Yes, what is an ozone layer? So this is the atmosphere, you know? This is you with your dad or mom, and this is you. This is your sister or brother, and you're roaming. Then here, there is sun. Sun's rays contain UV rays, ultraviolet rays. UV rays. Okay, so this ozone. What is this? Ozone reflects this UV rays. It does not let it reach you people. Ozone layer protects us from UV rays. Why do we need to protect ourselves from UV rays? rays? Sorry. Yes, because UV rays are harmful to us. Ultraviolet rays are harmful to us. What do they do? They cause us skin cancer. If you get exposed to UV rays, what will happen? You'll get skin cancer. Okay and your eyes can get damaged eyes can get damaged you won't be able to see your dna i told you your map can get damaged you can get diseases genetic diseases okay that is why it is necessary to protect us from ultraviolet radiation what does that function ozone helps us to protect us from ultraviolet radiation okay yeah Ozone is a layer prevent harmful ultraviolet radiations from reaching the Earth's atmosphere. And a depletion, yeah, it's a major cause because it it can causes sorry it can cause what skin cancer, genetic material or eye damage. 
okay now how do i prevent them basically it is caused by aerosol spray aerosol spray as in uh uh the deodorants okay the ac and refrigerator ka cooling matter it can it contains chemicals which destroy the ozone layer the government have restricted its production now but yeah they exist somewhere you know okay so yeah judiciously use aerosol spray you know because they cause hole in the ozone layer okay next state with reason two possible consequences of elimination of decomposers if decomposers are not there as i told you you know dead remains won't get what converted into nutrients and they start smelling foul okay because they won't be able to getting get converted into nutrients okay people will put this as a pdf if possible hai na we'll put it as pdf pdf you can download and just read go through it what is meant by exploitation of resources with short term our aims list four advantages exploitation of resources means i am using it you know like greedy person i become very greedy and i am using all the natural resources iron petrol hai na and all the water you know water there is water stress in india and uh, bangalore bangalore people use water very carefully okay what wa water is not there in south africa you know what happened there is day zero they were going to launch day zero day zero means water won't come in your taps okay so imagine if water doesn't come in your tap what will happen and that day is not far it will soon happen there is water stress in india okay so please judiciously use water don't waste water bangalore mein to especially there is water scarcity okay so please use water properly don't waste it okay then and so exploitation of resources means using them you know very unjudiciously do not respect you know we do not care for other future generation we we don't want we want to use all the resources ourselves only exploitation of the resources is short term mean consumption of the resources for immediate requirement without conservation for future say i don't want to save anything for my future generation i said i'll drink all the water i'll pollute all the water i'll use all the iron i'll use all the petroleum okay so that is exploitation that should not happen we need to protect it we need to care for our future generation okay now why do people engage in exploitation because population is so much we need to give them petrol there are so many vehicles we need to satisfy them for at least future ka so we don't know but at least now otherwise people will start writing so that is why exploitation takes place second thing industrial growth industries are growing like rapidly so they need resources hai na next is sorry yeah provides economic development economic development india is the third largest growing economy india is you know currently one of the fastest growing economy why because we are exploiting our natural resources hai na it makes our life comfortable if i have two three cars you know my wife can take one my children can take one i can take one hai na this is like exploitation hai na my life is comfortable i don't have to drop them all but yeah but that's that's like kind of pain hai na so yeah so this is what it is okay people so i guess we are done with this hai na i'll take certain topics which you wanted me to discuss okay the first thing i'm going to discuss is nephron nephron is the excretory unit it helps in excretion okay there are components of nephron what are they malphigian tubules then we have bowman's capsule people excretion okay first of all what is excretion what is excretion removal of waste material from the body removal of waste not what waste nitro genus waste yeah what is excretion removal of nitrogenous waste from body hai na what are nitrogenous waste urea human beings excrete urea 
okay urea then you have uric acid birds birds excrete uric acid then ammonia fishes excrete ammonia why do i need to remove my nitrogenous waste from the body why do i need to remove nitrogenous waste from the body because it is toxic to my body okay it will start killing my cells if i don't remove my nitrogenous waste my cells will start dying okay now excretion is people it is urination it is not shitting okay removal of undigested waste is waste is shitting that is ejection ejection is different urination is excretion what organ is involved in it kidneys are involved in excretion okay very good yeah so kidneys has millions of something called as nephron each kidney has millions of nephron these are excretory units we call them as okay then what are the parts malpighian tubule bowman's capsule proximal sorry convoluted tubule proximal convoluted tubule and we have distal convoluted tu tubule then i have henle's loop and finally we have collecting duct people you need to know these names okay you'll be like sir how how big they are as i told you these are just like names of your friend initially you don't remember your friend's name the more and more you talk to them the more more and more you time, spend time with them you'll get to know their name right so it, the biology is just like that only okay don't get scared of these names okay malpighian tubule bowman's capsule proximal convoluted tubule distal <coughs> convoluted tubule henle's loop and collecting duct okay now see in this 20 minutes only i'll repeat their name so many times you'll be like familiarized with them okay chalo let's see yeah okay now what is this this is it okay <coughs> just draw with me understand it okay i'll just explain it to you people that's it okay ha na so let's let's just label them now okay what is this this is a friend arteriole what is it a friend arteriole it gets the blood to the bowman's cap this is a friend this is efferent efferent arteriole and we have efferent arteriole what is this people yes it is bowman's capsule okay the capsule the cup like thing the bowl like thing what is it it's a bowman's capsule it has blood capillaries called as glo 
मेरुलस इट इज कलेक्शन ऑफ ब्लड कैपिलरी इज कॉल्ड एज ग्लो मेरुलस ओके वेरी गुड देन वी हैव दिस दिस थिंग दिस कॉइल्ड थिंग ओवर हियर इट इज proximal convoluted tubule proximal beta matlab proximity near near to bowman's capsule what is it proximal convoluted tubule you know what the convoluted mean convoluted means coiled proximally coiled tubule this is far what will i call it as yes please डिस्टल डिस्टेंट पे है तो डिस्टेल कॉन्वोल्यूटेड इट इज कॉइल्ड कॉन्वोल्यूटेड देन आई हैव ट्यूब्यूल ट्यूब लाइक थिंग डिस्टेल कॉन्वोल्यूटेड ट्यूब्यूल प्रोक्सिमल कॉन्वोल्यूटेड ट्यूब्यूल ओके पीपल दिस इज जस्ट अ रिप्रेजेंटेशन डायग्राम आई साइड टोल्ड यू पीपल हु कैन ड्रॉ बेटर देन दिस प्लीज गो अड ड्रॉ इट बट इफ यू हैव नो अदर गो यू आर नॉट एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड है ना जस्ट फॉलो दिस you will be good to go this is for those 60 70% student who feel you know they cannot draw they are very bad with diagrams this is for them okay hai na not not for if you can draw well very good i will appreciate it you will get more marks but yeah if you are not able to draw like perfectly like what is given in the book it's okay okay ha huh? so you can draw this but yeah please mark them properly the labeling should be very proper okay without labeling you won't get marks okay beta Sometimes so they'll just put A, B, C, and they'll ask you to you know label them. You know that also happens. So yeah, that's very important. Then what is this? This is Henle's loop. What is this? This is Henle's loop. This entire thing is Henle's loop. This is descending limb of Henle. This is ascending limb of Henle because the what happens is it flows like this from here it will go the blood it will come blood gets filtered the filtered blood moves out through efferent arterial but the filtrate goes through this and the urea is removed on the process it comes like this and what is this what is this people it is collecting duct what is this collecting duct okay this is a process like process of excision i'm not explaining but i think you properly know it hai na what happens filtration takes place over here hai na then water is absorbed then it is passed on to the collecting duct hai na uh, please study the excretory system okay just draw the two kidney ureters hai na this is urethra just this okay kidney hai na we have urinary bladder this is ureter and this is urethra okay just draw this hai na study them all the diagrams all the human system please study them okay very good so this was what nephron Okay, now let's let me explain the heart ka part. Okay, little bit heart ka part. I guess you people are confused over heart also, है ना? Let us do that. I'll just explain you the flow. What is this? Left atrium. What is this? Uh, yeah. yes people left atrium left ventricle right atrium right ventricle okay left side means left side of the patient you are a doctor say you are a doctor i am a doctor i am operating on the patient so his left not my left the doctor's left he is a patient i am operating on him okay so you are you will be a doctor consider yourself as a doctor whenever you are drawing it okay
the upper two chambers are called as atrium and the lower chambers are called as ventricles okay now we need to draw lungs and here we have organs okay now what happens heart helps us to pump blood throughout our body hai na now i breathe in oxygen rich oh, this thing the oxygen from here comes into the blood lungs mein what happens blood was there hai na what did it get from the lungs it got oxygen rich blood so oxygen rich blood comes to left atrium what brings this oxygen rich blood to left atrium yes people pulmonary i told you hai na pulmonary means related to lungs and pulmonary vein is the only vein which carries oxygenated blood now the blood has reached my left atrium now left atrium what happens left atrium contracts and pushes the blood to the left ventricle through a valve called as by by cuspid valve through a valve called as by cuspid valve cuspid means two cusps cusps as in like flaps two flaps it will open it has two flaps St flaps type of thing okay you know just to explain you people it has two flap by cuspid either this one has three flaps three tricuspid we call it as okay so by cuspid valve it moves to the left ventricle now the blood from the left ventricle moves to my organ what type of blood is moving to my organs people oxygenated blood what takes are you able to understand oxygen rich blood from my lungs came to heart heart mein where did it come left atrium left atrium it came to left ventricle then it moves to the organs through artery called as aorta people you know na arteries carry oxygenated blood veins carry deoxygenated blood but only exception is pulmonary vein and pulmonary artery pulmonary vein carries oxygenated blood okay and pulmonary artery carries deoxygenated blood organs from organs who takes okay sorry my bad from organs the blood goes to the right atrium right atrium and what takes it to the right atrium vena cava okay now it comes to the right atrium now right atrium contracts and the blood moves to the right ventricle through a valve called as tri cuspid valve it has three cusps okay now from here from right ventricle another vessel blood vessel called as pulmonary artery takes deoxygenated blood to lungs people are you able to see on the left side i'll just draw it again see here i breathe in oxygen oxygen reach my lungs after reaching my lungs where did it go it go into the blood and right, it was it, now my oxygen is in the blood now this oxygen rich blood is carried by pulmonary vein oxygen rich blood is carried by pulmonary vein towards where left atrium now from left atrium it got contracted now my oxygen rich blood came to left ventricle what type of blood is there in the left ventricle oxygen rich now this oxygen rich blood from this part where does it go through aorta what type of blood is aorta carrying oxygenated blood i would follow hai na very good now my organs re receive oxygen rich blood now what do my organs do organs will 
take oxygen rich blood get make energy out of it and release carbon dioxide keep producing use oxygen give carbon dioxide use oxygen make, produce carbon dioxide by respiration you know the uh, equation of respiration right carbon dioxide is produced as a byproduct so it is my organs will produce deoxygenated blood now what happens organ after taking oxygen rich blood what type of blood here also what happened oxygen rich blood came in now what type of blood will organs give back deoxygenated blood and right? it used oxygen and produced carbon dioxide so from organs what type of blood will come carbon dioxide rich blood this carbon dioxide rich blood is taken by what vena cava carbon dioxide rich blood is taken by vena cava towards where to the right atrium now from right atrium it comes to the right ventricle through what through tricuspid wall and from tricuspid wall to right ventricle and from right ventricle it goes to the lungs what type of blood is coming over here co2 rich blood now what do i do with co2 rich blood i exhale it out i exhaled out the co2 rich blood i have to understand i inhaled oxygen rich blood and i gave out the carbon dioxide rich blood it it but it is simultaneous process okay aisa nahi ki pehle oxygen will go then i it's a simultaneous i am taking in oxygen giving out carbon dioxide which has reached now it's a simultaneous process it's not taking individually taking this individually it's a simultaneous process okay now here if you can see my left side always carries oxygen rich blood if you can see my left side always carries see oxygen rich blood whereas my yeah right side carries carbon dioxide rich blood okay my right side carries carbon dioxide rich blood i will to follow so this is the entire flow people you just need to remember the flow from lungs it goes to pulmonary vein pulmonary vein say left atrium bicuspid wall left ventricle iota lungs okay sorry organs and just need to remember them i guess it, it's pretty easy okay pulmonary vein is the only vein which carries oxygenated blood pulmonary artery is the only artery which carries deoxygenated blood please be mindful of these two things and others also and see tricuspid valve is present between right atrium and right ventricle try try right sorry yeah try and right both of them have r so yeah tricuspid has what right ventricle me tricuspid is present on the right side try and right r try ka r and right ka r they are present on the right side bicuspid valve it is also called as mitral valve also called as mitral valve bicuspid valve is present in the left side okay people i guess i made this pretty clear hai na ha so if you are not able to draw that diagram i would request you matlab heart mein to at least you make this diagram but yeah if you are not able to draw that please at least draw this hai na again i am telling you this is for those people who are very hopeless with the diagram okay not for artists not for leonardo da vinci is okay it's not for them it's for those people hopeless people like me who want some hack for drawing diagrams okay i cannot like i cannot emulate the exact same paintings on the board you know onto my papers it's for those people who cannot draw their diagrams very you know properly and they are scared of it at least draw something okay and if you can beautify it and draw properly hai na i have just scribbled over i know my diagram is very bad but yeah please hai na if you can give it little time practice more hai na it will be you know better in a much better way okay people it's just to help you people okay if, even if i give it more time i'll be able to make it better okay but i don't want to do that hai na but i know I'm, i need to work on my diagram okay <laughs> uh, but please okay so it is just a diagram you need to label them properly if you can draw it well and good if you can draw the book diagram exactly it it will be perfect okay but yeah in case you are not able to draw them properly hai na you can follow these also okay very good now someone was asking me dialysis now dialysis mein what happens is this individuals kidney stop working 
है ना इफ किडनी स्टॉप वर्किंग वॉट कैन नॉट टेक प्लेस Excretion cannot take place. By excretion cannot take place. What do I mean? Urea won't go out of his body. If urea doesn't go out of his body, what will happen? As I told you, his cells will start dying. He'll become sick. And so I need to take that urea out. So in that case, we use what? Artificial kidneys. That is. डायलिसिस मशीन वी यूज आर्टिफिशियल किडनी कॉल एस डायलिसिस मशीन आई जस्ट एक्सप्लेन यू हाउ सो वॉट एपन इन डायलिसिस मशीन से ह्यूमन बीन इज देयर है ना आई टेक अ मशीन दिस मशीन हैज सेलोफेन ट्यूब्स वॉट ट्यूब्स सेलोफेन ट्यूब्स What do I mean by cellophane tube? Cellophane tube means those tubes through which diffusion can take place. Through which diffusion can take place. Okay. So now what do I do? Yeah. So what do I do? People, this is for understanding. Wait, don't say that. Yeah. What do I do? I take out his blood. and put it into a machine called as i take out his blood and put it into a machine called as dialysis machine okay urea is present where urea is present in the blood and his kidneys were not working that is why i need to take this urea through artificial method and where is urea present in the blood right we saw no nephron where what happens the efferent arterial comes blood comes and then only it gets filtered right similarly i am going to do the same process over here hai na now what do i do i fill this dialysis machine with a solution called as dialyzing what is present over here dialysis solution so this dialysis solution has all the components of blood dialysis solution has all the components of blood except urea dialysis solution has all the components of blood except urea so when what happens when the blood goes through this cellophane tubes what happens is blood ka aur iska concentration are same which will have more urea blood will have more urea or dialysis solution will have more urea blood so now what happens the urea from higher concentration moves to the dialysis solution where it is in low concentration so as the blood moves out the urea starts coming out of the blood and getting deposited in the dialysis solution and after the blood is purified i put it back into the human being i want to understand what is happening over here dialysis solution contains all the components of blood except urea so when the blood is passed through this dialysis machine the urea comes out of the blood into the dialyzing solution so if i now remove the dialyzing solution it contains urea so i was able to remove urea from the patient's body i guess i guess guys this is pretty clear simple topic hai na then i put the blood back into the organism oh sorry organism human being hai na it is used for people who whose kidneys have failed and are not functioning okay okay i guess guys this is the end of this print series and we had a wonderful time with you people we cannot explain how all like you know how good we felt looking at your response okay all our all our teachers of vedantu are very happy and yes you have you have been a wonderful audience okay we appreciate your time and effort and uh, the love which you show to us okay hope i was helpful and trust me all this enriching content you just need to revise them again and again okay and you will be able to do good in your exams okay apart from this we'll be uploading pdfs also i guess and you can download them and you know you can utilize them and please don't stress about board exams they are very simple exams okay and there are many big exams coming up for you people i'm not scaring you i'm just telling you it will be a part of your life okay as i told you take it as a challenge okay not as a threat take it as a challenge and kill it okay take it as a challenge and you know 
like give more time as it i, I keep telling you please don't you know say kiss or time time we don't have time you have lots and lots of time give more time you'll be able to do good in your exams and in the end i would like to thank all the vedantu team the ops people operation guys hai na my ppt the wonderful ppts were made by two people murthy and shivani and you know content was provided by vaisag and shridhar sir so i thank you all for this wonderful you know sessions of sprint text all the best guys do good hai na and any help you need okay just comment over there hai na we will try to get back to you and help you okay and always feel free to contact us at vedantu you know we will be able to, we will answer you people okay we will answer all your queries or incorporate in our other sessions or we may we start another sessions also okay so we will try to incorporate as much as possible whatever your feedbacks are we will try to put them in okay and try to give you more and more enriching content and make your life easier and help you you know excel in your board exams thank you all the best this is me amrit raj signing off Uh, all the best for your board exam see you bye